Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming With Me, Tony Mo, and we're here with another Zeus tutorial. So there's a lot of Zeusing that I've still been doing, and there's a lot of other concepts, apart from what I've showed you guys, uh, that I've developed over the past month or so, just, uh, you know, just to make the experience more enjoyable. So I wanted to share some more of those ideas with you guys. This, this one is going to be essentially a focus on creating um, really dynamic, I guess you could say. I don't really want to use dynamic, detailed combat situations. Um, and in doing that requires you to make much smaller scenarios. So again, this is sort of my mantra when it comes to doing Zeus, which is, you know, less is more when it comes to the amount of enemies you put down. It's more about the placement of those enemies. And again, the other elements that you use to create a more tactical situation, a more, a more detailed tactical situation to add more depth to the situation that you're throwing your players into. Again, if you guys aren't familiar with the series, this covers playing Zeus with a group of real players versus AI. So you're creating PVE missions for your friends. Um, and this pretty much works with any amount of people, you know, it just really depends on are you going to split up squads? Most of these you could even run like 10 players and you're again, you're just going to scale accordingly with the amount of enemies and what you put on the battlefield. But in this situation, I wanted to show you guys something here. Now we're not actually going to use the entire town of Panagia here. It's a very interesting name. Uh, what we're actually going to use is this small sort of worn out uh, depot here, I guess you could say. It's already got some nice objects and some nice tactical positioning. We even have a smaller town right here, which will probably, small little village, which will probably occupy to some degree. But essentially the background story that our troops are going to receive is that they need to prevent the expansion of opposing, opposing forces into the small town of Pangea. So these top four guys have just shown up. They're starting to unload cargo. They're bringing in more, more fresh troops and they're going to capture. They're going to take control of Panagia and your team cannot let that happen. So that's the situation. Now, rather than having the team drive all the way here, this would sort of be the start of the mission. And what I would do is probably, you know, fade it in and be like, all right, this is going to be a nighttime operation. We're going to show everything in daytime just for the sake of not having to stare at a night vision screen for 40 minutes. Um, but essentially our team would spawn in right here. So we'd go ahead and we throw down a respawn point. Now I'm going to use stock Zeus for all of these tutorials into the future. I'm just going to show you guys what you can do with what Zeus is, not when it comes to modded Zeus, which very little changes when it comes to modded Zeus anyhow, but essentially we'd have our team right here. Let's actually, we'll go and put down some, some NATO, uh, NATO recon patrol. Is that like four guys? Yeah. To simulate our team sort of chilling out here. Let's get these guys into a better formation. Let's say they're into a, a diamond formation and we're just going to make these guys be a little bit calm so they don't drive me crazy so you'd have your team of four or five whatever they'd spawn in here you'd kit them out in whatever way you can and now this is going to be the great part of virtual arsenal um, when it comes live into the stable build you're going to be able to go into the virtual arsenal create loadouts and then actually use those with the respawn menu so if we put down the loadouts option here and you can see we have all of these different options we have the csat one we can go to uh, the nato one and we have all of these. Eventually, you're actually going to see the ones that you've created inside of Virtual Arsenal. So, I, you know, I, <laughs> you just Virtual Ammo Box is still a really great tool, but at the start of missions, that's going to be a lifesaver to be like, this is what I want them to use. I don't have to sit here and for 40 minutes be like, oh, this and this and that. Not to mention people who don't use Virtual Ammo Box or people who don't use mods at all. It's going to be extremely beneficial, but let's get on with it. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at what we have here. And we want to decide, okay, you know, how are we going to go about this? Now, as I said, we have a group of opposing forces moving into the town to attempt to capture Panagia. So we're going to use this little resource depot here as a place where they're unloading supplies. So I found that a good thing as I'm doing right now is to create a sort of background story for yourself when you go to create these missions in your head. Um, over time, it becomes a very quick thing. I usually process and make up a story in like 15 seconds just on the fly. Like, there's a the town. What do I want to do? Where is my team right now? Boom, let's do this. Let's make it happen. So what we're going to do, this is one of my favorite recent touches, I guess I like to say. It's one of those things that I talked about in the past with adding elements of of just uh, extra layer of of detail to the scenario. Something that the team, you, that your team has to look at and say, mm, okay, we see what's going down there. Now, that's, that's actually a lot more. It looks like a lot more. The reality is you're not actually going to be adding more combat-ready opposing forces. But in this situation, what I'm doing is, okay, we have this troops, they're moving in. We're actually going to put down two Zamac transports. We're going to have one under each of these little bays here. Close one out a little bit further. One over in this cargo container area. 
And now we're actually going to simulate that there are troops here unloading the gear. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring up our op four. What we're going to do is we're going to put down one officer on each scenario. These guys, of course, are the officers. They're sort of just overwatching the whole situation. So we can go ahead and put them into safe mode, combat, uh, speed to, li to limited, and the stance to stand. And we're going to want to drop the skill all the way down. I don't actually know if that makes a difference, if I'm 100% honest, but I do it anyways because the AI, is, as we've gone through many, many times, is already OP. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put down a survivor. Now the great thing about survivors is that they do not have a weapon. So a lot of people instantly identify them as civilian. This is something that a lot of the guys that I run Zeus for over time have sort of recognized now and they just shoot these dudes, but you can still use them. They still work pretty well. And of course, if your team's not used to that, they're going to see this guy. And if, if they're the sort of people who identify a friendly or civilian as someone who doesn't have a weapon, it's going to cause a bit of confusion for them. At the same time, you could also say that their main goal is to not kill unarmed troops, but instead to attempt to detain them. You know, you can pretty much go a bunch of ways with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to head and first make sure that this guy is actually walking so we don't have to try and click on him while he's sprinting everywhere. And then we're going to have him do a rotating route here and there. Now, that may not look like anything, but let me finish what we're doing here quickly. Let's, let's speed this up a bit. Stop talking, build this, put this guy down, stance. So we stand there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into our empty objects. We're going to go down to military and we're going to go down to objects so we got objects military you're going to see we're going to have all these crates that we can now use so we're actually going to put these down and we're going to simulate that they're unloading the truck yes just like that so we're going to have an open box here he's taken from that box loading it into there we can even if we're very carefully we can load one of these into the back of the truck rotate that bad boy just right right at the tailgate uh, we can throw down another one. We can have a you know a, a closed full box over here next to this guy. We can move him a little bit closer. He's sort of checking in the supplies. You got the officer overwatching the whole situation. And there you go. You've created this nice little small scenario that when your team comes and identifies it, they're going to look. And they're probably not going to recognize that actual situation. They're not going to be like, oh, look what that he did. That's so cool. They might. But for the most part, it's, again, it's just adding that layered the, the, uh, detail layer. Layer of detail. Man, I gotta find a better way to say that whole thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the exact same thing over here, and I'm gonna kinda cheat. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna do Control C, and Come then Control down. V. Copy these guys, and then pop them down right there. Of course, we're still gonna have to set a combat route for these guys. You can see this dude's sort of already freaking out over here. Find me down. In fact, we might just have to delete that guy altogether. That's okay. We'll see. We'll do one troop on this one, anyways. It seems like a better idea. Okay, so that situation's taken care of. Now, the other thing that you would do in this in this scenario, because you're going to be running this at nighttime, and I'm not actually sure how many lights there are in this area. And depending, it looks like we actually have a few, so we should be all right. Depending on the map you're running, if you're running an Arma 2 map, obviously a lot of those maps don't actually have the same lighting system that the Arma 3 maps have. So you're going to want to actually run lights. To do that, you simply go into your lamps, uh, objects lamps, or you can actually do, for this situation, I would go into objects construction, and you're going to go down and you're going to find the uh, portable lights. So you can set these up as if, you know, the team is, the Op4 team is just coming in, they're deploying these lights just so they can get the cargo unloaded, it's the middle of the night, you know, they didn't have time to get electricity on in the town yet, they don't have a light system established, whatever you want to do with that. So that's that. We have these guys unloading here. Now, of course, you could also go ahead and actually add some sort of a threat here. I mean, why would these dudes come in even in the middle of the night and not protect the resources that they are unpacking into their newfound territory? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring up an HMG. So this is going to be a serious main threat for, the, for your friendly team here. I'll have him parked right at that entranceway there. And that's going to be something that they're going to have to be very, very cautious of because they're going to see the HMG again. That's an instant threat for them. And that's something that can lay really heavy damage and waste to your team there. So now we could go into more detail. We could add some more containers here. We can switch up the scenario. We can add some more. What we'll actually do is I would definitely throw down a guard sentry. So we'll go into the guard infantry here. I'll throw down a guard sentry. And we'll actually set up a nice little patrol going around the outline of this town. So we're going to click there. Click there. Really simple. And we got ourselves a nice little uh, sentry. Now we can actually put these guys on walk. We'll leave them on cautious because they're a guard sentry. That's what they should be doing. And we'll make them run a uh, straight line formation close. 
So these dudes are going to go about, they're going to patrol around the town again. Just another small element. We haven't actually put that down, down that many opposing forces. But in the situation, you have a rotating patrol, you have the HMG, you have the two officers, and then you have these three extra unarmed guys. So it looks like a lot is going on. But again, you're not really turning the tides against your team. You're not making it completely unfair. But it's going to be very easy for them to die. I've set up situations like this and had two, three guys die. It happens. I mean, you know, you really have to be aware. But again, it's fair. It is absolutely fair. Now, the last thing that I would probably do in this situation is set up some sort of a vehicle patrol. Because they're fun. They keep the team on their toes. They really keep them aware. They don't let them slip up. So we're going to set up a regular Ifrit patrol. The other thing you could do too is you could actually put down the HMG patrol. And what you do is you're going to unload the, uh, the car here. Again, hitting G if you're unaware of that hotkey when you're selecting any sort of transport. It could even be friendly. You can actually unload <laughs> real players out of their vehicles by hitting G. Um, we can set up an HMG. What this is going to do, since we know the AI is so, so just hardcore, we're removing the gunner from this vehicle. So they're still going to identify it as an HMG. They're going to be concerned on the correct level. That's an HMG. Let's be careful. But... It's a little bit more forgiving. And what you can do as Zeus is you can actually get inside that vehicle when you find uh, the time is right and attempt to lay down some rounds. So we're gonna actually going to have this this patrol go right past their info, their insertion point. We're going to put them right on this route here. you got to be very precise. The more waypoints you lay down for vehicles, the better you're going to do for yourself because if you try and just like leave it to cut corners and things of that nature, it's not going to be good for you. Let's make sure we go ahead and move our... Our uh, starting point as well for this vehicle here. The more points you put down, though, the more precise the vehicle is going to drive. It's going to prevent them from crashing into things like barriers and, and walls. And just in general being a real pain in the butt. When you all of a sudden realize, hey, where the hell is my patrol? Why is he just like off in La La Land? And you find out he crashed into the side of a building or something. Now, the other fun thing that we can do in this situation. Again, I said I wanted to make use of this small area here. Is we're going to pretend that the rest of the town was evacuated of civilians. But we'll say we'll say it's the mayor. <laughs> the mayor was left behind because it's his town, and he's like, oh, you know, I'm not going anywhere, you dirty, grimy bastards. This is my town. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put down this guy right here. Now, the thing that totally sucks about this is we can't actually do anything with the civilian. Um, I run a mod that allows me to actually put him into surrender. So you kind of got to work with what you have. If you have that script in, that's great. Put this guy in surrender. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll pop down a, uh, we'll pop down two. Yeah, we'll go with two. Let's see what we have here. We'll go with one of the leaders of CSAT. We'll put down an uh, put down Atar. We'll have him be like holding this guy up, like, hey, you know, what are you doing? We're taking over this town. Screw you. We don't care what you think. And we'll put down Amder. Both these dudes, these two sort of heads of the CSAT organization, are in here to claim this town. They're letting the, they're letting the mayor know that they mean business. Now, of course, we're going to want some vehicles as well, just to sort of get a little bit of a situation. It's also, when you put down vehicles, you know, empty vehicles, you're providing points of cover for your team. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a... I'll see. We'll use the civilian car for our mayor here. This will be his, his little SUV that he had parked right out here. And then as for these guys, their CSAT, we'll go ahead and run them uh, with just the stock Ifrit, we'll say, that they pulled up with. So they're in town with the Ifrit. And of course, we've got to throw a little bit more life into this, so we're going to put a small guard sentry uh, doing patrols around the town here. So we're, gonna, we're just going to have these guys sneak everywhere. They're checking every single bush, every single corner, looking for any remaining civilians, whatever it may be, resistance. We're going to go ahead and put them on a walking pace. And we'll also put them into a tight line formation. The other thing you want to really make sure you do is put their stance on stand. This is usually going to force them to stay standing or only use intelligent cover. They won't just drop prone all the time. So there you have it. We've created this nice, tight-knit, small combat situation. And this is sort of, you can use this as a starter. This can be an intermediate point. And of course, there's nothing wrong with running larger scale operations with making your team feel like they're overwhelmed. But again, you really want to focus on how you do that. You don't want to just throw more enemies. You want to use sometimes uh, just sort of missed attacks. You can run a strafing run that just barely misses them. You know, you can do a lot of different things. And of course, I've talked about this in the past. With this sort of situation, you can have a sort of risk versus reward scenario. I mean, they're running a nighttime op. Let's go ahead and make it nighttime, see what the situation would look like. Let's take a look at the lighting effects, how the lighting is going to be working for us, whether or not we would have to actually add lamps. 
So that's actually perfect. There's a decent amount of lighting here. If you wanted to, we could still go ahead and add a couple more of those work lamps. You know, you can do what you do. One option I really want Bohemia to add is the ability to have patrols running with flashlights on. I also wish that everybody didn't spawn in with night vision. Night vision is great, but you lose so much with night vision. It's Everybody makes a joke about it, but I always run at least one nighttime op, and I usually force everybody to turn off night vision, and then I go in every single op four that I put down, I click on them, I use remote control, and I dump their night vision goggles to make it fair. I just wish there was the ability to do that, but I think we'll be able to do that with the virtual arsenal, so that's gonna solve a lot of those issues. Um, <laughs> what was I on about now? Yeah, the patrols and things of that nature. So, you know, you could you could go and you could add some more streetlights in here if you wanted to. Again, you can look at the situation, and they have a pretty big distance to cover. So what I would probably do here is add another uh, guard sentry. Maybe patrolling the road, actually, coming out of town. That would actually be, probably make a little bit of sense there. We got this guard sentry is going up and down and around. Just sort of, you know, keep an eye on the road. You could even put a little guard outpost up here. Maybe they've set out an outpost to protect some of the main roads coming into town. We'll probably leave these guys on a, on a gentle jog. Again, we'll run them in a, we'll put them in a side, a horizontal line formation. So there's smaller things you can add in a course based, in, based on the number of actual friendly units you have. You can increase the number of these people. But uh, some of the big things though, like I was saying, I really wanted to show this off. You know, this little construction area. Now I've actually set it up too in an open field and I had like half of a base constructed. And I had like three or four survivors. They're setting up an actual base. There's a lot you can do with these situations where you're just creating, you're creating a scenario that isn't purely based on combat in order to increase the amount of numbers of enemies you have on or just, you know, make the scenario more difficult, again, without making it directly difficult. That indirect difficulty thing that I always talk about is just something that is always layered in everything I do. But yeah, this would be the perfect start to a mission, the perfect, you know, midway to a mission. You can even have your team, once they claim this, set up a friendly, you know, a friendly up, uh, forward operating base. They could set up an FOB in here. You can pretty much take it however you want from there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. I mean, I really like the focus on these smaller situations because with the AI, I just find it's more rewarding for the players to have smaller, especially when you have CQB focused scenarios. Now I know this isn't 100% CQB. There's going to be some long range shooting probably being done here, depending on how you outfit your team. You know, if you want to actually make them run like one DMR, one support gunner, you know, one medic, uh, three riflemen, a grenadier, an engineer, however you want to do that setup. Sometimes you just give them whatever the hell they want. They're going to tackle that situation differently. But again, the prime, the prime pieces of combat that they're going to engage in are going to be close quarters. They're going to be inside these smaller facilities using the different pieces of cover. They're going to have the cover of night actually as well. If you go and remove the night vision goggles off all of these guys, I just find them much more rewarding. I always get really, really down when I start doing things in open areas or when I start trying to do things even in forested areas, unless it's really heavy forest. It just gets depressing because I put together these missions and, you know, they, they just never work out. The AI is way too harsh. I have, I'm like deleting AI on the fly because they're sniping my team with, uh, you know, assault rifles from 5,000 meters away. I know I've probably said this a million times, but that is why these types of small missions to me are prime. And if you have, if you know, if you Zeus for like 10 or 15 people, you probably might even know more than I do about Zeus at that point. So it's probably not a concern, but you could always split up two squads. You can have one team go somewhere else, you know, close by. You could have one team performing Overwatch or maybe even controlling a manned UAV, an, uh, an unmanned UAV. There's a ton of different things you can do with these scenarios. But that's been a look at these smaller sort of CQB-based scenarios, guys. If you have any questions on what I did here or just any questions about Zeusing in general or any tutorial you'd like to see me make focused on Zeus, because I really like making these and I have a lot of ideas, but I, I pretty much make them when the concept, when the idea pops into my head. So if there's anything you would specifically like to see me cover inside of Zeus, maybe something to do with helicopters or boats or aquatic marine style situations, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see if I can make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.